Oh, I love it. Particularly glossy or any uh, cake. Um, I figured, ooh, I'm sorry if you hear any um, weird or slightly terrifying noises outside. It is the wind. Um, it's really windy here. Um, kind of chilly. So, yeah. I'll hold up finished work for the day and figured maybe I could do a video about um, some of my favorite authors today. Um, so, if people ask me what my favorite book is, I usually have a really hard time answering because there are so many books that I particularly consider to be my favorite that I honestly can't pick just like one or two or whatever. So um, I figured that maybe instead I would have an easier time naming off my top 10 uh, favorite authors and thereby also talking about um, maybe my favorite books um, by those authors. So, there we go. Um, first up, one of my favorites would be, have to be Agatha Christie. Um, my grandmother got me into her back when I was um, a teenager. Uh, my grandmother is responsible for me loving mystery. She used to let me watch Murder, She Wrote, and Diagnose as Murder, even though I probably um, maybe he was too young for that, <laughs> um, but she got me into Agatha Christie, and I really love, um, her mystery. She is, of course, the queen of suspense, and out of all of her books, my favorite would have to be the first one I ever read by her, which is Murder on the Orient Express. Um, I really truly loved this. Um, if you do not know the story of Murder on the Orient Express, um, it follows the quite brilliant uh, detective Hercule Poirot. Um, he is heading back home from a case aboard the Orient Express. It gets stuck in a snowdrift and whilst being stuck in a snowdrift, a murder is committed, and Hercule Poirot has to help solve it and figure out um, the mystery behind the man who was killed. So it is. it was made into a movie a couple of years ago. It's one of our most popular ones. Really good. Uh, next up would be um, Roald Dahl. Now, I have loved Roald Dahl since I was a little kid. Um, I love pretty much all of his stories, but I think the best one or my favorite one out of the whole um, bunch would have to be Matilda. Um, if you don't know the story of Matilda, um, which, where have you been? But okay. Um, it is about a little girl who is extremely intelligent. Um, she learned how to read and write when she was very young. Um, she grew up with a family who does not really appreciate uh, knowledge or the fact that she is smart at all. They're obsessed with the television and um, her dad's kind of a crook. Um, but yeah, so she um, is bullied by her family and misunderstood by them. She's bullied and misunderstood by the headmistress at her new school. Um, and possibly due to all of this uh, stress, she develops uh, telekinetic powers. And it's pretty awesome. So, yes. <laughs> um, it's an adorable story. And it is, yeah, it's just one of my childhood favorites. Um, but Oliver Oldall is great. I've always loved his, um, his sense of humor and his ridiculous, um, ridiculousness, I guess. Um, especially if you have read any of his poems, um, or, um, 
the Oompa Loompa songs in um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And also Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. I believe there's also some in there too. That's really good. Um, da, da, da. Let's see what else. Next up on my list is Howard Frank Mosher. Um, he was a Vermont uh, author predominantly, and um, most of his works were based there. Um, he really had a way of kind of weaving a story and really bring you into uh, rural Vermont, mostly set in the past. Most of his stories were set in like the 30s, 40s, or 50s rural Vermont. Um, in the fictional town of Kingdom County, which is way, way, way up um, against the border of Canada. And um, my favorite out of all of his books would have to be A Stranger in the Kingdom. Um, this is set mostly in 1950s um, Kingdom County, Vermont. And uh, it is told from the point of view of a young boy. Um, who experiences, um, or rather witnesses, the um, kind of changes that come over his town once a African American pastor um, begins preaching there, um, and kind of witnessing the the racism, um, as well as um, the evilness that lies underneath this small town when a murder is committed. So it is um, a really good story. Um, there's some creepy elements to it. Um, the, the characters are, for the most part, um, <laughs> except for a couple of jerks, they're you, very likable. And um, it also has a, an important message at its core. And um, Howard Frank Mosher just had this way of, like, just, just, fully pulling you into um the setting and and having you experience the story so it's just it's really good and I really love all of his works they're very good um uh, next up Ma, would be Mr. Stephen King um I kind of came to the Stephen King game a little late I didn't really read anything of his until college. Uh, my parents aren't really horror people that much. They don't they don't really like scary things too much. Um, so I was introduced to him later on um, once I had friends who were who were more into the spooky things. Uh, I haven't read uh, I really haven't read that many of his so far. I think I've only read like maybe 10 books um, at this point, but so far, my absolute favorite of his would have to be The Shining. Um, it is a classic. Um, I will say I do love the Stanley Kubrick movie um, adaptation, but for completely different reasons than I love this um, book. I mean, it, it does have the unsettling and creepy elements, but at the heart of the story, um, more so than that adaptation is the the family and especially um the kind of harsh uh past of Jack and how he is able to be pushed to um the extremes that happen after uh severe isolation. By the way, this is probably a pretty good but maybe not a good idea to read this at this time while we're all isolated because it's just yeah. But <laughs> no, it's um it's a really good uh story and also um heartbreaking in some ways too. You really feel for the characters a little more um than I think you do with like the other adaptations of it, but very good. Um next up I would have to say would be Meg Cabot. Um, I have probably said it in a video before, but I really connected with Mia Thermopolis 
in a way that I'd never connected with a character before and honestly haven't as much I haven't really had that connection since either <laughs> um so I would say out of out of all of her books which are all just hilarious and um very very interesting I think send pretty positive messages um to to young people especially young girls um I would say I have two favorite series um, in here, one of which is the Princess Diaries series, of course, um, and other than that, I would have to say my other favorite series would be 1-800, Where Are You? Um, this one isn't, uh, spoken about as much, I don't think. I don't know if that, um, is partly because she originally wrote it under a pen name, Jenny Carroll, um, but this is um, about a teenage girl who is on her way home from school um, in Indiana. Yeah, yes, Indiana. <laughs> Sorry, um, and gets caught in a thunderstorm with one of her friends, and um, she is accidentally struck by lightning. Um, she survives um, and seems no worse for the wear until the next morning when she realizes she can now locate missing children. Um, it is just really good. It's hilarious. Um, the messages behind it are very, um, well done. And it's just, it's a really, uh, really good series. Um, let's see, next up, my favorite would be Amy Tan. Um, I discovered her books when I was assigned. Um, my favorite of hers, the Joy Luck Club, um, in college. Uh, I've read a few others of her so far, but honestly, the Joy Luck Club is still my, uh, favorite out of the bunch. Um, Amy Tan has also a wonderful way of, of weaving a story and especially, um, kind of showing the relationships, uh, between people, especially mother-daughter relationships. That's both um touching and frustrating and hilarious and heartbreaking all at the same time and I would say that um the best one uh the best expression of these relationships would be the Joyla Club um which kind of bounces back between um China and um present day well present day like 1980s or 90s um America and um war-torn China um and it is basically for uh Chinese American women and dealing with their lives and loves and also their sometimes strange relationships with their um mothers who immigrated uh to America and their mothers are then trying to tell um, their daughters their stories of what they went through um, and how they got to where they are um, to get some kind of understanding between them. I suppose it's just really, really beautiful and sad and, um, and fascinating the whole way through. Uh, next up in my favorites would have to be Jane Austen. Um, I truly, um, I love her keen observances of society, especially since, um, even though some of them are in the situations in society as she knew it are extremely outdated, um, <laughs> some of it is very relatable, uh, even even in like how far ahead in the future we are now. Um, I will have to say as much as I really truly love Pride and Prejudice, I think my most favorite of her books would have to be Northanger Abbey. Um, I think that this is potentially the most accessible out of um, 
her books. This is, I believe, her earliest work. Um, it tells the story of a young girl named Catherine Moreland who um, goes off to Bath to some friend, with some friends um, to take in society up there and uh, make some interesting friends, meet some quirky characters, and uh, also potentially meets the love of her life. I'm not sure. It is... Um, basically a a satire of the um the novel back in the day uh Catherine is very obsessed with gothic thrillers um and has an overactive imagination and the book itself kind of makes fun of that and makes fun of like the kind of elements of the gothic um thriller at the time and also kind of makes fun of, uh, you know, her, her station, her situation in life, um, the entire first, uh, chapter is basically introducing Catherine and saying how she's pretty much, you know, not meant to be a heroine, um, she's not destitute, she's from a loving family, both of her, uh, parents are still uh, living, no one's, like, been mean to her, she wasn't born, like, an angelic child or anything like that, it, she pretty much, she's a very unlikely person to be the heroine of a story, so it, it just, I don't know, it's just, it's very funny, um, and yeah, I think that's, it's probably the easiest one to, for you to get yourself into Jane Austen, but, um, I particularly like it because I think the humor is on point, and I really love Mr. Tilney. I think he has the best sense of humor out of any of the love interests um, in her novels. But, um, then, let's see. Favorite author number eight would be Terry Pratchett. Um, I just discovered his books last year with the Tiffany Aching series, which um, starts off with the tale of a nine-year-old girl. Um, who lives in a very um, rural and at times kind of ignorant community um, made up of mostly people who work the land. Um, and her grandmother, who was this larger-than-life character, passed away um, the year before. And she's seen some tragedies recently in her, her town where a woman was an older woman who was um, accused of being a witch ended up uh, dying due to the actions of the townspeople and Tiffany has decided that um, she is going to become a strong person and she is going to become a witch to ensure that um, no one is treated as unjustly as that ever again um, in, in her town or around her at all. and. Um, after making this uh, kind of decision, she finds herself thrust uh, suddenly into um, kind of the world of, of fairies and, and creatures that she has to fight against with the help of some crazy little blue men called the the Nakmak Fiegel, um, or the Wee Free Men. And um, they're basically tiny pixies with uh kilts and terrible Scottish accents um it's pretty uh ridiculous all around but the book has some pretty badass action in it um some societal observances that are really great actually and um it's just a, a really good story um so I would say my favorite of all of his books so far has been The Wee Free Men which is the first um, book in the Tiffany Aching series, but I've also been making my way through the rest of his um, Discworld series, and it's all just hilarious and really, um, really, really fun to read. Um, number nine of my ten top ten favorite authors would be Julia Alvarez. Um, I really love her writing as well. 
Um, she is also another author who is wonderful at writing um, relationships, um, especially female relationships, um, especially those between uh, sisters. Um, I I love the uh, point of view switches that she has in, in some of her works between the characters. Um, and I think out of all of my favorite of her books would have to be In the Time of the Butterflies, which was actually the first book of hers that I ever read um, back in high school. And that book is the historical, um, historical fiction book on the Trace Mariposas, um, which are uh, three women who are sisters um, who grew up um, well, they and their um, one remaining uh, sister grew up under the dictatorship of El Trujillo in the Dominican Republic. Um, and uh, the three women ended up uh, being part of the resistance against him, and uh, things didn't necessarily go too well. Um, as they usually don't with dictatorships, but um, it's was still a a really um, beautiful and and heartbreaking uh, story, and um, the relationships between the sisters was just really um, a wonderful thing to see. So I really like that out of all of them, even though it's as pretty rough to read at times. Um, and then number 10 of my top 10 favorite authors would be Nora Roberts. Um, I read a lot of romance novels, like a lot, a lot of romance novels. They're kind of like my, I guess my guilty pleasure read. Um, but I think out of all of them, Nora Roberts would be my favorite author um, of that particular genre because she does it so well. Um, I don't particularly like some of her earlier works um, because they leaned more towards your stereotypical Harlequin uh, kind of, you know, setup that they had there. But when she kind of branched out on her own, uh, her works are very, very well done. Um, the banter between the love interests is pretty great. Um, it develops very well. Um, I do have to say sometimes sex scenes are a little bit much, like just the kind of metaphorical things that happen. So it's just, it gets a little awkward sometimes, but it's not as bad as like it can be sometimes. Um, romances but um and the thing I really like about her books is that she generally adds in um like a kind of creepy element or mystical or magical um kind of character or setting or a thing happening or uh sometimes there is like a, a mystery or some kind of crime the underlying thing that's also really uh makes it uh, more fleshed out and interesting and the goal is not just you know the romance there's other stuff going on at the same time um and while I love a lot of her books I think my favorite of all of hers was one that I read last year it's one of her most recent ones and it is Shelter in Place um and that book is about the survivors of a um, pretty horrific uh, mall shooting and it kind of deals with their um, you know PTSD and them kind of moving on from it and and dealing with it and um, also trying to you know find love and themselves after after this happening and it's it's pretty rough to read sometimes, um, especially if that's something that's particularly sensitive to you. Um, but at the same time, I think it was handled very well. And I think it has a very kind of um, hopeful, kind of a hopeful message at the end of it all. And um, 
I think I said it in my my Goodreads review of it, but um, a lot of the time with with authors, sometimes people discuss like what they consider to be um, the masterpiece for a particular author. Um, and I believe that Shelter in Place would be um, the masterpiece for Nora Roberts. Like, I think that's the best thing she's ever written. Um, and I really recommend it if you're able um, to handle that, of course. So that um, would be my top 10 favorite authors and my favorite books by them. Um, it is still really windy and stormy and gross. So still here doing some reading, hanging out, not going anywhere, of course. So yeah. Um, hope you all are well. And um, hope we can all be out doing stuff soon. Bye.